and welcome to another video. Uh, today I'm very very excited because I have just got a brand new tour delivered uh, just literally today uh, and I wanted to show you what it was. So if you think back to my previous videos uh, I had a white sewing machine. Uh, it kind of died recently in the last week so I splashed out and bought a new one and I thought I'd do an unboxing video to show you what you get inside. So let's have a look. Okay, so um, I've bought a Toyota Okaki Renaissance sewing machine, um, and I think it looked really, really nice on the on the website that we're looking for. Um, so let's unbox and find out what's inside. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is open it up. Now I have got a pair of scissors. Normally I try and avoid cutting open boxes with scissors because obviously there might be something delicate inside. Uh, I've seen other unboxings videos of this, there was two on YouTube, one with uh, a lady who just got it but she didn't really know anything about it and another one which was silent so it, you didn't actually, and nothing got explained, you just saw things. Uh, so I know that this has got a lot of protection underneath so I'm just going to very carefully cut the tape with my very pointy scissors. Let's cut down there, let's cut down there. Just being really, really careful that A, I don't cut myself, and B, I don't cut anything inside the box. Now we can open it up and see what we've got. Okay, so uh, the first thing, like I said, it is really, really well protected. Uh, can you see all that polystyrene on top? But let's see what else we've got inside here. Okay, so we've got the top open, let's see what we have in here. So the first thing is this, which is the power cable by the looks of it. Ta da I can plug it in. So there's a nice power cable there, let's pop that on the table. Uh, then we've also got, this is a starter kit, uh, so that's got a few things in it. Let's see, what does it say? It looks like this is for embroidery, because this machine will do freehand embroidery, which is one of the reasons I got it. It's not something I've done much of, uh, but it's something that I like to think I could do. So there's a nice little starter kit in there. You get some thread and you get some sheets, which then you can use uh, to do some practice embroidery, I suppose. What else have we got in here? We've got some more things in here. This is the dust cover. I don't even just about to see me. Do you know what? You can't see me. But it doesn't really matter because you're not watching this to see me. You're watching this to see this new machine. Uh, so this is a lovely dust cover. Now my old machine had a hard dust cover. It's like a plastic case. I'll show you my old machine in a minute. Compare it. But this is a nice cloth one. So that would be quite useful. Although, unlike my other one, it won't be so good for protecting my cat's from getting themselves jabbed with the needle. Uh, so my current one has like a hard plastic case that goes around, uh, which means that when my cats decide to investigate, it's all safe, they can't get anywhere near it. So I will have to remember to take my needles out. Hmm, that's a little bit less convenient, but anyway. That's what happens when you've got cats. Okay, then we have here, this looks like it is the presser foot, but I'm gonna have to take something else off first. Let's start with this big polystyrene bit. All out the big box. Oh, that was the press of it. At least that's out now. So let's get rid of this big box. Now you can see me. Okay, so we've got the instruction manual. That's very, very useful. Uh, quick instructions, and then there's instructions in different languages as well, which would be useful if you um, don't read English and you want it in a different language. We've got the press of foot. This is really well packed. Um, it came by DPD, so I enjoyed watching the little van drive around. I do like DPD deliveries, just for that, that one reason. Um, I like being able to see what's happening. So it's got a lot of tape on here. I'm quite impressed so far though by, hasn't been too much plastic. I don't like things with plastic all over the place. But there is a little bit, anyway. Let's take that off. Deal with this all later. Don't worry, my cats are not going to get caught up in the plastic. They're all outside. Just very carefully snipping this. This isn't very helpful. They have taped this plastic bag onto the wire. Let me see. Get a bit closer. 
they've taped it onto the wire, which means to get it off, because they've, how they've done it, I'm going to have to cut the plastic bag off, which isn't really what I want to be doing. I really want to be using a big sharp pair of scissors by a wire, but I don't see what other alternative I have, since I can't get that tape off. Anyway, we'll come back to that. So we go, there's a foot presser pedal. Uh, let's see what we have in this. I always think this looks a bit like a big ice cube, but anyway. What's this? This is that kind of like paper seller tape stuff. If you want to try to reduce their plastic, don't they? Oh, that made a nice sound. And then in here we have the main feature. So I ordered the red. You can get it in uh, a sort of green colour as well. Uh, as you can see on the box, there's like a green colour available. And it also comes in black. I really like red. So I went for red. So this here is a very, very cute little quick guide. So it has things on there so you can see how to thread it, um, what, you know, threading a needle, threading the machine, how to use the foot, press a foot and things like that. Um, and then that little that little thing stands up somehow. Oh, maybe like that. Hey, that looks good. So I can stand up there. That's really useful actually because um, with my other machine, I would have to keep getting the instruction manual out and that's just really annoying. And also I just use instruction manuals. Hold on, scene's coming. Uh, so actually that'd be really useful. I can keep that somewhere in my cupboard and then I can get it out if I need to. I've seen other uh, Toyota machines where it actually kind of clips onto the top of the machine. But anyway, this one doesn't. Uh, then we have the actual machine. So let's see how I get this out without breaking it, she says. Okay, here is the bit we're all interested in, the actual machine. It's like a little bit around here. I'll look in the instructions in a minute. You can see this cut out. I'm just thinking, I'm wondering if this, if maybe you wrap the wire inside, like this, and then that maybe clips onto there, somehow. For easy transport. That would be quite neat, wouldn't it? See if we can make that work. Anyway, here we go. That's round the wrong way. Here is the machine. Crouch down so I can have a proper look at it. Now, like I said, I got it in red. I really love red. My daughter's favourite colour. Um, and I just think it looks really, really smart. It's much bigger than it looked on the website. It's It looked quite small on the website, so I'm quite pleased to see it wasn't as small as I imagined. Uh, we've got this little tray bit here that I've just fitted back on. Uh, and inside... ta -da! is all the feet and fun things that came with it and look there's little pockets where they go Let's see if i can work that out so some machines you buy you don't get any feet with them and um then you have to go and buy feet you get uh, so the feet the presser foot is what i'm talking about all the different press feet and actually that can end up costing quite a lot what i like about toyotas is generally they come with a selection of feet it might not come with every foot out there uh, but they do come with some so let's see what we've got uh, this is the serger foot, you can tell it's got a little guide there. It won't do serging in the same way that an actual overlocker machine will. It won't cut the fabric at the same time, uh, but it will do a sort of overcasting stitch, which means if you just want it to be a little bit more secure, but you're not going for the full four thread um, overlocker, then it's just a bit easier. I do have an overlocker, I don't use it very often because the effort and the pain of having to re-thread that machine uh, is not always worth it. So I use it when I really, really need a strong one. So I'm not entirely sure where these go, but I've seen they just drop into places like that. That's what the instruction manual. So let's go through these feet, because it, it tells us here what all the different feet are. So we have a uh, soft cover to go over the top. See how that looks on there. So there's a little built-in handle on the back for carrying. Uh, all nice. Something for my cats to explore under there, isn't there? Uh, so soft cover. Then you've got the quick guide. Um, 
you've obviously got the power cable, a very exciting part of the whole thing. Uh, quick instructions, which is this bit. Uh, number five is an instruction manual. Oh, maybe in here. Oh, look, a bit I didn't discover. Uh, let's say there's no instruction manual in there. Ta-da! There is a disc. Uh, so I assume you can just put that in your computer and get the full instructions if you want to. There's also in here a warranty certificate, things like that, that I never ever look at, but I'm sure someone will. Um, that's in there. And accessories catalogue, because if you haven't spent enough on your sewing machine already and you want to spend a bit more, and they even provide you with a nice, easy booklet to see what else you can get. It's probably worth keeping that with your machine, because um, if in the future you did need another bit, it's much easier to find out what it's called than putting into Google about 200 different searches for an item that you're guessing the name of. Uh, so probably useful to keep hold of. Okay, then we've got uh, the foot control, which we had over here. And this plugs in somewhere. Where does it plug in? Obviously, you could just read the instructions. So I'm more a kinesthetic kind of person. I like to just see what happens. So that plugs in just down there, at the back. Doo -doo. Uh, you see it's got like a little curved side, so one side goes in and it's rounded and the other side is flat. So you just match up the shape with the bit on the machine. If you had one of those brick sorters as a child then that will serve you well. You know, some, the nice foot presser there, foot pedal, foot presser, I don't know what that is. Anyway, okay starter kit which we've already looked at, might have a proper look at that in a minute. Um, and then we go on warranty card, we've looked at that, and then we go on to all the different feet that it comes with. So, number nine, this one, it's already on, it's actually already here. So the zigzag foot, put that there. Uh, then we have the overcasting foot, oh yeah, I've already put that in the box, haven't I? Overcasting foot. It has a gliding foot, now this is special as far as I'm aware, to the new Toyota Super Jeans. So this will actually allow you to sew uh, over 12 uh, pieces, so 12 layers of even denim in one go, and it just glides over. The way it works is it sort of just goes up and down, up and down um, as a foot, so it glides over it. So that's special, unique to the Toyota Super Jeans, which this is part of. We have the zipper foot. Now that's good, because my other zipper foot, it had, um, it lost a little bar, so I was having to use like a thick needle to hold it in place. Anyway, that's fine. Uh, the blind stitch foot, this one. I've actually never used a blind stitch foot. Maybe I could start using that. Um, and we have an embroidery foot, this. Now this machine is very, very clever. I'll do a video of it working later once I've got it set up. But this machine will actually let you do freestyle embroidery. So you put your bit of fabric underneath, you set it to embroidery, put this foot on, and it will actually allow you to move the fabric around however you want, rather than a traditional machine, um, which only lets you go forward, and then the needle knows how to position itself for the embroidery. This will let you do free motion which is very, very exciting. The buttonhole foot, ta-da! I have used these before and they're very, very useful. Uh, so much easier doing buttonholes using the buttonhole foot. Non-stick foot, um, I assume, I did have one of these on my other one, but I never used it because it was called the speciality foot and I assumed it was for doing the letters and things on it. Um, I never got that far. So I've just bought a machine that does embroidery, although I didn't even use the letters on my previous one. But oh, good intentions, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, but I assume a non-stick foot means that it, it, it will run smoother over certain fabrics, uh, which probably would have helped me recently, doing sort of um, fabrics that kept getting stuck on the dog teeth. Okay, then we have um, quilting guide, that's this. So you put that on, and it just helps you to measure where your lines are going. Uh, needle plate screwdriver which was here, very, very, very cute, tiny little thing for when you want to go in and out, to get into underneath, like my previous, I've used this more than my needles in the last week and two, using my old sewing machine, having to get rid of all the bird nests under my um, plate, and it wasn't because of the tension, it wasn't because of the threading, it just would do it, and it's been driving me up the wall. Anyway, moving on, buttonhole cutter, 
So when you've created your buttonholes, uh, I do have one of these already, but it's quite nice to get one on the machine. They're also really good for ripping seams. Uh, so that would be very useful in time. Uh, then we also got with it some needles, quite nice. Uh, so there's some ballpoint needles, some different fix, thickness of needles for using different fabrics. Ballpoint is what you use on a stretching needle because it, it helps the fabric move better and it goes through it better. Plastic bobbins, uh, which is really good. I did buy some plastic bobbins from a shop. Uh, wasn't a sewing shop, I just saw them, they look quite nice colours ones. And actually what I've been finding is that the plastic is too thin and this just might be something useful for you to know um, and I won't be buying them ever again because when they've been going on to be wound, uh, because obviously it spins so quickly and the thread's going on so quickly and everything's going on so quickly they get quite hot and they've actually been getting almost like melted <laughs> and then misshaped um, so I'm quite glad to get some new nice new shiny plastic bobbins um, okay so that's sort of what you get with it which I think is really good you get this nice little case here but I'm going to work out where all these little bits go and I will be back with you in a second when it looks Lovely and neat and perfect. See you Okay, I'm back. So um, I've had a little look, put the way bits in place. I'm going to show you. So you've got the machine like this, and you literally just pull that off. And I actually found a secret compartment. So you have this bit, which, as you can see, I've got on my my feet here. I've put my little screwdriver bit there because I didn't really know where else to put it. All four bobbins fit beautifully in there. So I decided that's obviously where they went. I uh, put my needles in there. My other little feet just just in there loose. Um, but then, I found this section, <gasps> another little extra bit, and there's a beautiful little space where the glider foot can fit in really nicely, and um, I can probably even put like my little needle bits in there, if I really want it to be very, very specific. Uh, so we've got some different bits in there, and actually that's a really nice size accessory pot. I can keep all sorts of things in there, I could keep like some black thread and white thread, or the colours I use more often. Or um, well, the ones I'm using for that project in there, because <laughs> quite often I'm like, put them all away, nice and tidy, and then I come back to it, I'm like, which thread was it? Um, I'm having to colour match again. Uh, so actually that means I can keep that in there, all ready for getting out next time. So I think that's a really fantastic little accessory bit. Uh, although, as unlike what I've just done there, you do have to put this little bit on first, really. Uh, so it has a little lip that goes underneath. So if we do it the correct way, that might be better. Put that on there. Let's see if my needles will live under there. I'd like them to. Yes, they will. And then that one on there. Go in there. I, the only thing is, it's not quite as sleek as my old one, uh, but I think it's okay. Uh, so that's a little accessory pop. You've got a nice thin sort of leg. Let's call it a leg. Table. I don't know. It's probably got a certain name. This bit uh, for putting over your trouser legs or sleeves or things like that. That's really nice and thin. Mine was much chunkier, and that's because you've lost the back bit and you've lost the front bit. My one, you just lost the front, so it's still quite wide. Um, and you can see there, it's really, really lovely. And then, if I keep turning it round, this bit here is the magic part. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it, but you won't be able to see me. And I know that will make you sad, but It'll be okay. We'll get through it together. Okay, so zoomed in. So, um, hello. Uh, so basically, here we have uh, this little lever here. Now, I don't know if it's going to do it because it's all sort of set up. Oh, yeah, well, so one way, this way, basically, the feet go up, the dog teeth, um, not the feet, the dog teeth, dog tooth, tooth dog, whatever you want to call them, feed dogs, they get there eventually. The feed dogs go up um, if it's over to one side, and then if you put it over to the other, they go down. And because they're down, it then allows you to uh, manoeuvre the fabric underneath when you're using the embroidery setting without the um, feed dogs getting in the way, and then you just simply move it back over. Now, I'm assuming they're not moving because it's not plugged in. Um, but we'll do a little plug-in test in a second. So that's really, really clever. Uh, I think there are other machines that let you do that, but that is one of the sort of main features of this machine, is that you can do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn it on, uh, get it all plugged in, and in um, I'll do another video that shows you how to get started with using it. So the first thing I'm gonna need to do is the very, very exciting plug. I'm gonna get that plugged in, and the foot presser, presser foot, 
can you tell words are not really my thing um, and going to get some fabric so we can do a couple of little test runs with it okay see you in a minute